Hey everybody, my name is Jeff Bunk. I'm here at Robbinsville FMA District event with the Fun Robotics Network. I have Team 1923, the Midnight Inventors out of West Windsor, Plainsboro, New Jersey. Uh, they're going to be talking about their awesome robot, one of the top performers at the event this weekend. Super excited to learn more about this here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. All right, so Shriven, why don't you start us off? Tell us more about your robot. Yeah, so the most important part of our robot, I'd say, is the elevator, and we wanted our elevator to be the most consistent part of this robot. So we chose a two-stage cascading elevator at the beginning of the season for consistency and the height that we need in order to score from L's one through four. Um, this uh, elevator is run by a five to one rev gearbox at the back, and this gearbox is centered, but we have two chain runs running to either side. And the reason we did that is so that there's equal load on both motors if we chose to shallow climb off of our elevator. And so our elevator's max height extends, this top face will extend 96 inches, and this lets us score L4 Coral comfortably, and in the future lets us possibly score in the barge as well. Uh, yeah, do you wanna show us? I'd love to see the extension. Yep, so that's our max height. And so you notice that this sort of uh, doinker that we called it uh, popped out. And so this was a last minute addition to sort of complete our needs list where we wanted something to remove algae off the reef. And so this is completely passive and it, we hold it below uh, outside uh, within frame uh, using this sort of plastic and the relative motion of these of the elevator stages. And so when these two elevator stages move, this bottom roller pops out of the plastic and with the surgical tubing and the zip ties acting as a hinge, um, this sort of lets us clear algae off the reef because uh, these are one-way one -way bearings, so these only spin in, they don't spin out, and this sort of lets us hit algae off the reef to open up more scoring locations for us. Uh, I gotta say, by far my favorite mechanism name so far this season, the Doinker. Yeah, uh, mine too. All right, Arya, what's next? Um, so on the back of our robot, we have our static coral chute that helps us, that allows us to intake coral. Um, basically what it does is it's a passive piece of polycarbonate that's bent around this 3D print on the bottom and this 3D print is actually a stiffener for it. We went through a few iterations of this starting off with metal and wood and um, acetyl at the beginning but with our first district event we saw that the acetyl began to crack so we switched to polycarb. Um, we we also added this stabilizer at the top because we had some issues with coral falling vertically and then it by adding the stabilizer when the coral falls, it, it's able to fall into the desired um, angle that we want it to. And after that, the coral chute leads directly into our end effector, which is at the front of the robot. So if we see this, it goes directly in no matter what orientation you put it in. And so at the front of our robot, we have our end effector, which is run by two Kraken motors, and it's connected by pulleys and belts. We also have flex wheels on the hex shaft at the front of the end effector. And basically all it does, it, it's, we went through a couple of iterations of this as well. It just intakes the coral. And then as the elevator moves up and down, we're able to shoot it at whatever level we want. Very cool. Thanks, Aria. Uh, Dasha, can you tell us more? Yeah, um, so speaking of the end effector, we have um, the wheels over here. They're, the way that they um, are decided of like when they work is based on the beam brakes, which we'll come back to later. And speaking of beam brakes, we have the limelight camera and USB camera as other sensors on our robot to make sure we always have driver feedback at, um, for the robot, so that we always know like where the robot is on the field. And another, um, a new thing we have this year is the battery cover being on the top of the robot so because we have such an open design we can have the battery cover be have the battery inserted through the top of the robot which makes it a lot easier and faster and then on the back side of the robot we have our electrical board which we've made vertical this year 
so that we have more access to all of the components and kind of greater accessibility with planning for all of the different components we have. So it's a very, it's a much easier design to kind of diagnose if we have any issues arise. And we actually haven't had any issues at this competition so far. A knock on wood. <laughs> and over here on the this side of the robot, this is where our electrical chain is. So the electrical chain is where we have all of the wires running up to the elevator for the coral end effector. So all of these wires have like statically statically mounted to the elevator and then go up the electrical chain to the coral end effector on which we have the beam brakes. So Griffin, if you want to talk more about that. Yeah, sure. So one of the things that's critical about our software is we use a state machine to be able to organize our states and where our robot is at a given time. So we use those sensors that we have alongside mechanism, alongside our motor encoders to know where our mechanism is at a given time. For example, with our beam brakes right now, when we enable the robot, you will see that the coral will do a little backing maneuver so that it can consistently center in the same position. If I enable, three, two, one, enabling, it goes forward slightly, so then we hold in a specific position. The reason for this is because when we raise the elevator, we actually push the coral out a little bit such that we can have more accurate scoring. Another cool part about our robot is we have a slow close on the elevator because of the state machine, such that when we raise the elevator up, like if I bring it up to L2 real quick, uh, three, two, one, go. You'll see that when we drop it back down, it does a slow move down to the bottom, such that we aren't having metal on metal contact with the hard stop. Um, another feature with that limelight, this is our first year doing um, using Limelight 3D Pose. We use that with uh, Path Planner to make an auto alignment algorithm such that we press one button and our robot drives right over to the closest side of the reef, right to that pole, and then we can score. Another cool thing, using this 3D Pose, we've developed an autonomous dashboard. So right here you can see we use Elastic along with some sendable choosers such that we can select uh, any sort of auto, we use. We have a specific naming convention, and we can choose any scoring locations on the field, any scoring heights, any starting locations, and then one of three station intake locations, and then instantly generate a path such that our robot can run it. For example, this is one of our favorites. See, generate will go green, and then we can run that autonomous. Very cool, thanks Griffin. Yeah, I love the, the custom ability. It gives you guys a lot of flexibility in a match, uh, which is super helpful, and it lets you, uh, you know, work with other teams' autonomous is pretty easily, right? Awesome. All right, guys, that's it. 1923, the Midnight Inventors, one of the top performers here at the Robbinsville District FMA event. Um, super excited to meet you guys. Really excited to see what you guys do this afternoon. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interests, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual price when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details.